Hey guys, so this is something that I saw, I think I saw too much Tash do this. She's a smaller beauty channel. She talks a lot about unnecessary spending and how to avoid it and also doing like project panning when you try to hit pan on like eyeshadow palettes, bronzers, blushes, stuff like that. In other words, she doesn't promote just buying a bunch of products like most of the makeup channels, the beauty gurus on YouTube do. And she's also trying to move her makeup stash to fully cruelty free, which is really cool. Anyway, I saw a video from her cruelty free starter kit for like $100 or under $100. So I wanted to do something like that, but I wanted to do it vegan. And this isn't just makeup, it also includes any tools that I would use. So brushes, sponges, stuff like that. And I thought this would be good to do, not because I'm like an expert on makeup or anything like that, I'm not at all, uh, but a lot of the cruelty-free stuff that I've seen, not really from too much Tash, not talking about her specifically, but just in general, it's oftentimes focused on more expensive cruelty-free brands with vegan products, you know, like Urban Decay and Tarte and Kat Von D. And I've seen comments from people saying they would love to do vegan makeup and cruelty-free makeup, but it's so expensive. And that's just not true. There are lots and lots of cruelty-free and vegan, even vegan options that are super cheap. So this is what I would do if I were starting from scratch. Again, I'm not like a makeup expert. I'm not a makeup artist or anything like that. But just for me personally, if I were starting from scratch, what would I buy? Again, this is for me. So like, I'm not buying anything to contour. I'm not buying any sort of bronzer. I'm not buying any highlight. Uh, I'm not buying any liquid liner because I can't how. I also don't use lip liner because that's just a whole another thing that I would have to do. <laughs> there are a lot of products here and maybe it would be useful if you were looking for vegan options that aren't super expensive, but are things that someone else has tried. And honestly, a lot of this stuff is like really highly rated by other people as well. Okay, so I do wanna talk about the companies that I'll be mentioning really quick. Uh, I have kind of two criteria. The first one is that the company's cruelty free, obviously. And then the second one is that they are explicit about whether or not their products are vegan. It doesn't have to be a 100% vegan brand, but they have to be explicit about which products are vegan and which are not. So either they have some sort of master list on their website, or they have, you know, the V on their packaging, or on the product page itself on their website, it says like vegan. So in other words, not NYX, if you're familiar with the drugstore brand NYX, although they're kind of pricey. I don't even consider their, them drugstore, honestly. It's like physician's formula. It's pretty pricey. Point is, they've said that, yeah, they're cruelty free, but they won't say if a product of theirs is vegan or not because they can't guarantee that it's vegan or it's not vegan. That's obnoxious to me. I'm not even going to bother with that brand at that point personally. So the companies that I mention are Elf. Elf is not only 100% cruelty free, but also 100% vegan. They have, I don't even know how many products, an insane number of products. They are very inexpensive. Actually, some of their newer stuff is kind of creeping up, but most of their products are very inexpensive. Now they have just recently in the past like week or two, they've updated their website so that there's no longer the cruelty free and vegan little label on on every single product page. So I did email them about this. I got a response back within like three hours or something. And they said, yes, all of our products are still 100% cruelty free and vegan. And if you go to their FAQ page, it does say that they are cruelty free and that none of their products contain any sort of animal byproducts. I also talk about Wet and Wild. Wet and Wild has a ton of vegan stuff and they do have a master list on their website. If you just type in Wet and Wild Vegan, you'll find find it and they list all of their vegan products, which is awesome. Also their newer packaging has the little V on it if the product is vegan. Another one I talk about is ColourPop. They have a lot of products that are vegan and on the product page itself, it says whether or not the product is vegan. BH Cosmetics, another one with a lot of vegan stuff. And again, it says right on the product page if it's vegan or not. The final one is Miss A. Uh, they're known for selling like $1 stuff. They even sell some of the elf stuff that's one dollar um, and they do have not only makeup but jewelry as well I don't know about their makeup, whether or not it's vegan. I haven't looked at it, but their brushes are synthetic. A couple of other inexpensive cruelty-free companies to check out that I don't I don't have any products from, but I just wanted to mention them really quick. Essence, I haven't tried any of their products, but again, on their product page, it says if it's vegan or not. The other one, which I will mention in a minute, is The Ordinary. They are mostly skincare focused, very inexpensive skincare, uh, but they do have some foundation, also very inexpensive, and it says on the page whether or not it's vegan. 
last thing and then I'll get to the makeup. Please, if you are moving toward vegan makeup and you have non-vegan makeup, please use it. Don't just throw it away and then buy new stuff. There's no sense in wasting it. You already have it. And also be careful about buying stuff and then returning it. If you are returning something to a store, they're just going to throw it away. Including Sephora. I watched a former employee saying that they just throw those even expensive $40 foundation they just throw it away. So if you can use a product, obviously if it's something that's just breaking you out, you know, but if it's something like a, a foundation isn't the right shade or a lipstick isn't the right shade, maybe there's a way that you can mix it. I have lipsticks that don't work for me that I just mix, like even liquid lipstick, I will just mix two on the back of my hand and then I can use it. And if you really don't like something, you just it just does not work for you. Again, maybe it's making you break out or something. There are organizations that will take gently used makeup and actually sanitize it and give it to people who need it, like women in homeless shelters. So check out where you are, check for local organizations that do that sort of thing. Okay, Jesus, I'm sorry. Let's get to the primer. I know that not everyone needs this, but this really makes a difference for me because I definitely have fine lines and whatnot, and the primer seems to help fill those in a little bit, which is why I like a silicone-based primer. It also just feels really awesome, the one that I use, which is the Wet and Wild Photo Focus Primer. They've actually changed their packaging, I think. They have a matte one and they have a dewy one, but I think this is just the matte one. It just has different packaging now. The dewy one is like water-based and it's got like shimmer in it. Again, this is silicone-based and it's $5. ELF also has a bunch of primers. I haven't used any of those, but they've got like a hydrating one, a pore-filling one. I think they've got like color-correcting primers. So for foundation, I have actually several things here that I like but I think I would choose the Mega Cushion Wet n Wild Foundation. This is new and I just love it. The shade range is ridiculous. It's so bad. It's got like eight shades and the darkest one does not look dark at all. This is the lightest shade in light ivory, light neutral. It works for me pretty perfectly. And the smell is amazing. It smells like just vacation, sunscreen, awesome. There is some SPF in this, SPF 15, but I, it's not enough to even mention. Really, really sheer coverage, which is all that I need. I mean, maybe you can build it up. I, I honestly don't know because I don't use very much. I just have some discoloration, some redness that I liked covered, and this does that. It feels great on. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything, which is awesome. And it's nice for my skin, which is dry, especially right now. It's just so dry here. We actually have a humidifier, which makes such a difference. Otherwise, I get really tight like dry patches here and a little bit here and it feels terrible. The other bad thing about this is that it is way more expensive, way more expensive than the other wet and wild option, which I'll mention in a minute. This is $8.99 for only 0.52 ounces. So like a typical foundation would be like a full fluid ounce. Compare that to, again, the other wet and wild option, the Photo Focus Foundation, which is a full fluid ounce for $5.99. So $8.99 versus $5.99, basically half the product in this. So this is the uh, Photo Focus Foundation. I have this in Soft Ivory. Talking about smell, this has a very different smell. It has a uh, sort of paint smell. It's not great. It's not the best smell, but I don't really care. And it doesn't linger at all. I mean, once I put it on, I feel like I don't really smell it anymore, but maybe that's just me. I mean, I've, I've watched other reviews where people were like, no, I cannot use this because it smells so bad. So if you're really sensitive to smells, honestly, you might just want to not try this one at all if, if you haven't already tried it. I mean, I think this says that it's full coverage. Again, I have no idea. I don't use a lot of this at all. I use it just like I would use any other sort of foundation, really more like a BB cream or something like that. I'm just using a little tiny bit to cover up some discoloration. And people say that this is more for people with dry skin and this is more for people with oily skin. But again, I have dry skin and I find that this works perfectly fine for me. But again, that could just be because I'm using so little of it. And then the next one that I have here is the BH Cosmetics. This is their Naturally Flawless Liquid Foundation. Oh, I forgot to mention this has a lot of shades, but then when you actually look at the colors, I don't know, they don't look that great to me. It's like mostly white, just variations of white. And then when you look at the deeper colors, like the deepest color that they have 
it doesn't look that deep to me. I don't know. It's hard to tell because I'm looking online because actually in store, they don't even have the deepest shade that I've seen. They don't, they don't have the entire range in store. This one, on the other hand, if you look at the shade range, it has a lot of colors in the medium to dark uh, range. And this is actually what I'm wearing right now. This one is very similar to the photo focus, I would say. And this is a little bit more expensive. This is $8.99. So the same price as this, but again, you're getting, you're getting a full ounce with this, so definitely a better deal than this. This one also has a pump. The photo focus does not. I know some people are like upset about that. They don't like that sort of thing. I, I don't care. It does not have the paint smell at all. It has virtually no smell at all. It's very comfortable. Apparently it is buildable. It's pretty thick, so I imagine that it is. Again, I'm only using a little bit, but it feels really nice. I mean, it it feels like the cushion in the sense that I don't feel like I'm wearing foundation. And this is in the 204 Natural Beige for those interested. Oh, I should mention, I had to get this off of the Ulta website. And if you go to Ulta, they don't have all of the shades. So it looks like the shade range is shit if you're on Ulta. And actually some of the comments, people were complaining about that. But if you go to the BH website, they've got way more shades. Okay, a couple more. I know this is so ridiculous, but the next ones I'm gonna fly through. It's just the foundation one is kind of the hardest thing to buy, right? So the e.l.f. Flawless Finish, I have not tried this, but a lot of people really like this foundation. It's $6. It seems like it is the same price as the, the Photo Focus, and it is, but there's less product, so it's not as good of a deal. Always remember to look at how much product is actually in the bottle. Again, this has one fluid ounce. The Flawless Finish has 0.68 ounces. And the last one I'll mention is the Ordinary. I talked about them before. Again, this is not one that I have tried, but I wanted to mention it because it is so cheap. They have two the serum and coverage foundations, $6.70 and $6.90. They have 21 shades, several medium to dark. Really good reviews. People really seem to like this stuff. So maybe check them out. Okay, moving on to concealer. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. This is three, yep, $3.99. And it works really well. This color is really, really good for me. I think this is the lightest color. Light ivory. I don't like to get like a super light concealer. I know some people get a concealer that's one shade lighter than their shade range and then they put that under their eyes to highlight. I think I look insane when I do that. So I really just want a concealer that's closer in color to just the foundation that I'm using. I don't use any foundation uh, from like about here, I would say. And then I just use a little bit of this concealer and then just a little bit of powder to kind of set it. The next one I'll mention, I didn't bring it over here, but the BH Cosmetics one, again, like their foundation, they do have a good amount of shades, lots in the medium to dark range, $5.99. I have the lightest shade, which is just, it's just too light. It just looks insane. If I use it on my eyes, to me, it just looks really freaky. Uh, I'm going to find a way to use it if I have to mix it with this or something else. Also, ColourPop. ColourPop has their no filter concealer for $6. They have 15 shades. Also, e.l.f. has tons of concealer options. I think every one of them has a terrible shade range because it's e.l.f. Next is blush. This is from e.l.f. This is a cream blush. I try to use cream products for the most part. I mean, other than eyeshadow and like some powder to set, this is in Soft Rose. It's their Beautifully Bare Cheeky Glow Cream Blush for $4. This is one of their more, a little bit more expensive products. This is still cheap. I mean, this is a lot. This is going to last me a long time. I've used this several times and I've barely made a dent. Really easy to apply. I just use my finger and it looks insane at first. I look like a clown and then I just take my sponge and then I just kind of like tap it away. And then it's just really, really mild color. Uh, it's hard to mess up, which is good because I'm not great at makeup. <laughs> I can easily over apply blush and look crazy. Again, there are lots more vegan options that are inexpensive. e.l.f. has a ton of different blush options. Again, all of their stuff is vegan. Uh, BH Cosmetics has some that are vegan that look really, really pretty. The Wet n Wild Color Icon blush line, three of the five shades are vegan. And ColourPop has some for $8 each that are vegan. Again, if you just go to the product page, you can look for the little V. The next thing I'll mention is uh, setting powder. This is Beautifully Bare uh, Finishing Powder. This is in Fair Light. This is $6. Um, I'm not like totally crazy about this. I don't know. It's just a, it's just a setting powder, but um, I'm kind of afraid to try anything else because again, I tend to get dry skin and this doesn't feel super drying on. I actually use a setting powder and then I use a mist because 
this alone, it does feel a little bit dry. And then if I add the setting spray, it's like, oh, it feels good. But I find that if I don't use the powder and I just use the setting spray, my makeup can tend to shift a little bit and it doesn't stay on very well, especially like around the nose and around this area. So I'm, I'm kind of afraid to try any other powder because I'm afraid it's just gonna be too like mattifying, too drying, something like that. But I don't know, I doubt there's anything super special about this powder. And for $6, maybe I could find something that was cheaper. So if you guys have any recommendations, that would be dope. Wet n Wild does have a, it's called Take on the Day Mattifying Powder for $4.99. For setting spray, I have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Natural Finish Setting Spray. Again, I think they just rebranded these as well. This is natural finish, and then I think they have a matte one. I really like this, honestly. It's not that great of a deal. There are a couple things from Wet n Wild that are like that. They seem really cheap, but if you look at the amount that you get, again, like the Mega Cushion Foundation, that's actually not that cheap. It's kind of ridiculous. This is only 1.5 fluid ounces, but I really like it for a drugstore setting spray. I know one of the big things that people complain about is the sprayer being shit and you just get like little droplets all over your face instead of a nice mist. I find that this sprayer, at least with this particular bottle, is really nice and I don't get that at all. Now, it doesn't have a super nice smell like some of the higher end ones have. Like I've tried the Tarte spray that smells like cucumber and it's awesome. It smells so amazing. This one doesn't smell the best, but the smell doesn't linger. Again, for me, it's like the foundation. It doesn't really last, so I don't care. Next is mascara. I have the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara. This is $2.99. They do have another vegan mascara. It's the one in the yellow bottle. I think it's called Mega Volume. I think those are the two vegan options that they have. They also have this in waterproof. That one is not vegan. I really like the thing for this, the, what is it? The wand, the wand, uh, cause it's small enough and skinny enough that it's easier for me to do my bottom lashes. I'm not great at applying mascara and I can kind of get it everywhere. So I really appreciate when the wand is good for like the bottom lashes. The thing I like about it is that it doesn't flake like hardly at all. And that's, the most important thing for me because I find that I've tried so many mascaras over the years, like high-end mascaras that are awesome. They make my lashes look insane. Like the, what's the Too Faced one? Better Than Sex mascara. Yeah, it looks awesome, but then it flakes all over the place and then my face looks disgusting and dirty. So I would rather have a mascara that just adds a little bit of color and lengthens them a little bit. Doesn't do that much, honestly, but doesn't flake than one that looks amazing, but then makes my face look disgusting. And it's cheap. You know, mascara is something that you're supposed to replace regularly, like every three months, I think. I don't want to spend 20 something dollars for a high-end mascara, especially if I don't love it, if it's just kind of better than this. I don't know, that's that's kind of crazy to me. Another option, this is the e.l.f. 3-in-1 mascara. They have a lot of mascara options. And again, they're all vegan, so that's cool. I really like this one too. Uh, this is, I think it's the same price. Yeah, it's $3. I like the wand on this because the, the ball here, I don't know what this is for, honestly, but I use it for my bottom lashes. And again, it's like really easy because I can just use that little ball and whip, 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 whip. The one thing I don't like, it does flake a little bit, but not as bad as some of like the higher end ones that I've used. Uh, but it is quite wet. So I have to be careful because I can easily get mascara like all over my face if I don't let it properly dry. So that's mascara, uh, BH Cosmetics. I think they're all their mascara has beeswax or something in it. It's not vegan. The same with ColourPop. Next is eyeliner. This is another one that I, I don't know, man. I've tried, I've tried eyeliners. I've tried higher end eyeliners, like uh, one from Tarte, I think. I forgot what it was called. An eyeliner is an eyeliner to me. Like talking about either the pencil or the gel, the gel liner, they're all the same. They all wear away like super quickly. <laughs> like, I don't know. At that, at that point, I'm not going to pay 20 something dollars for an eyeliner. Especially again, if it's something that I'm supposed to replace every three months, maybe I just haven't tried the, the best one. I don't know. So I just chose to get the cheapest thing I could find, the e.l.f. Satin Finish Eyeliner Pencil in black, $1. And also I want a like brown color too, e.l.f. Brow and Eye Pencil in neutral brown, $2. So $3 for two eyeliner pencils. Again, if I'm supposed to replace it every three months, if you haven't guessed, I don't tend to do that, which is probably not a good thing. Yeah, that's only $3 every like three months versus again, what would that be like $40? If you guys have any recommendations for inexpensive eyeliner that actually stays on, that would be super cool. I think honestly, the problem for me is 
maybe I just have super watery eyes and so everything just wears away. I did try uh, the ColourPop one. This is their cream gel liner. They have tons of different colors. Ruhaha, it's like a brown color. Again, it performs just the same. Next thing I'll mention is eyeshadow primer. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focused Eyeshadow Primer. This to me performs just as well as the Urban Decay Primer, what is it, Primer Potion? That's like 20 something dollars. I've used this several times. It performs exactly the same to me and it's way cheaper. Next up, and I'm not really going in a good order, I just realized, but I guess it doesn't matter, but this is a brow product. This is the e.l.f. Lock On Liner and Brow Cream. This is in medium brown, it's $4. Uh, this is actually pretty dark. I'm not wearing this right now, but this is what I usually wear. I really like it. It's gonna last me forever, which is why I really love it. I've already used it so many times and I've barely made a dent in this thing. It's really easy to use now that I've used it a bunch of times and I know how much to use because it's really easy to over apply. Over -apply. The one thing I'll say is that medium brown is really dark to me. I don't mind that because I often like wearing my brows darker, but I do have in my list, I actually have two of these. So again, if I were starting from scratch, I would buy this one and then I would buy their other one in light brown. And I think they have two other colors, a darker one than this, and then a like blonde kind of color. For the price, it's, it's so great. It's gonna last me forever. Again, now that I've used it and I know how much to apply, I can do it really, really quickly with just a little angled brush. What I'm wearing right now is actually this ColourPop Brow Boss. This is light brown. I just find that it is so light. Like this is actually a lot of product on my eyebrows. I find that I have to use so much because I have like no eyebrows. They're so sparse from about the middle to the end there that I have to use so much product that I am gonna run out of this super quickly. Also, there's this Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Mascara. It's just what it sounds like. It's a brow mascara. This is in nothing but brunette, ha ha ha. This is actually really intense. I didn't know how this would work on me. I didn't think I would have enough hair for it to work, but just a couple swipes of this and it's actually really dark and it goes on super quickly and I'm done. I have to keep using it and messing around with it. I'm not sure I like the look so much when I've used it. From far away, it looks fine, <laughs> story of my life, but from up close, it you can really tell that there's product on my brows. It just doesn't white look right. So I don't know, I need to keep messing around with it. Maybe just use a lighter application. That's probably all I need to do is just not use so much. And now for the final eye product. This is the most exciting part, I think. The eyeshadow palette. Oh, I love eyeshadow palettes. Oh my God. And I found one that is quite inexpensive. This is the most expensive thing I would say on this list. It is more expensive than a drugstore option. BH Cosmetics Glam Reflection Rose Palette. This is pretty new, so probably wait until it's on sale. Probably in a few months they'll have it on sale, but this is $15.99. It has 15 shades in it, mostly matte, which I really like, and a few shimmers. Typically when I do eye makeup, I use matte, and then I only use shimmer on the lid. I don't know if I'm just too old for shimmer everywhere. I don't know. It just looks really weird if I've got shimmer everywhere. So um, this is actually what I'm wearing today. Oh yeah, you're supposed to cover the mirror, right? I'm a real beauty YouTuber. How do I even cover it? It's too big. <laughs> How do I do this? I'll fix it in post. I've used this several times already. It's definitely gonna last me a long time. That's the best thing about eyeshadow palettes is that they last it's got 10 mattes and it's got five shimmers. I've used eyeshadow that is better in the sense that it's like softer, really creamy feeling um, in terms of the shimmers compared to the, the Kat Von D metal matte palette that I have. There's no comparison. Those shimmers are insane. They go on with just a dry brush, just pat them on and they're just so explosive. They're just so beautiful. Whereas these shimmers, I do find that they're much better if you wet the brush first and then put them on, then it goes on really, really nicely. But the mattes, I really like. They're a little bit chalky, but they blend really, really well. I haven't found any sort of like patchiness. Like if I put too much product and it just forms that kind of patch. I haven't had that happen with these at all. And again, I'm not very good at putting on makeup. So that's, that's really good for me. And the colors, of course, they're insanely boring, insanely boring browns, kind of pinky neutral tones, but that's what I wear most of the time. So again, if I were just starting my kit from scratch, 
trying to spend not a whole lot of money, this is something that I would buy and I would be totally happy with. ELF has a bunch of eyeshadow. They're mad for matte palettes. I think they have a few of them. Those have really good reviews. I've watched a bunch of YouTubers talk about how great they are. I was really tempted to honestly get one of those, but I have enough eyeshadow right now. ColourPop also has some vegan palettes and vegan singles. Again, make sure to check the product page because not all of their stuff is vegan. Some of the the reds and whatnot do have carmine in them. And then Wet n Wild has their quads and their tin pan palettes that they just kind of reformulated, I guess. In the tin pan palette, one of those is vegan. It's the comfort zone one. And then in the quads, they have a few of those. I think three of them are vegan. And the price point on them is great. They are super cheap. For me, again, I like more mattes and it seems like in all of them, They've got a couple like transition shades that are matte, but the rest of the colors are like shimmery, which is just not for me. So on to lip stuff, and then I'll talk about brushes and tools and that'll be it. So this first one is just a kind of standard lipstick, I guess, with a, a more like matte finish, so not super satiny. This is the Mega Last Lip Color from Wet n Wild. I don't like the color of this one. They've got lots of colors and I think they're all vegan. I'm not sure about that. This is the old packaging, so they don't have vegan on it. But again, check their master list to see. This is in Just Peachy. I It's just not a shade for me. I've learned that like peachy pinks and coral pinks just don't work for me. It looks really weird on me. I think it looks weird anyway. I do like the formula a lot and they have a nude color, Bare It All, that looks awesome. I think I would really like that. So I would, I would definitely buy that over this. Yeah, the formula is really nice. It stays on for quite a while, given that it's not like a liquid lipstick and it is more matte, but it feels really comfortable again for what it is. It's hard to find that kind of perfect balance where you have that color, but it's not super duper drying again, like a liquid lipstick because I like liquid lipsticks, but I can't use them every day. They will just destroy my lips. Some runner ups. This is the e.l.f. again from their Beautifully Bare line. This is their satin lipstick. This is what I'm wearing right now. Smooth and creamy feeling, which also means that it doesn't stay on very long at all. It's also not nearly as pigmented as this, but I really like this. There's only like four colors, I think. This is Touch of Nude. They have like Touch of Pink, which I also have. I do like that one too. Again, it's one of their Beautifully Bare, so it's a little bit more expensive. This is $5 for 0.313 ounces. This is, again, half of that for 0.11 ounces. So basically the same amount of product. And again, I have to reapply this one so much that I'm gonna go through it really fast. It also doesn't taste or smell super disgusting. Some of the e.l.f. lip products, they just have this awful sweet taste that is just disgusting. This does not have that. It just smells like lipstick. And then just to mention ColourPop, they have their Lux lipstick for $7. I haven't tried any of those, but several of them are vegan. Um, and I think BH Cosmetics has some vegan lipstick as well. Now on to liquid lipstick. I do like liquid lipstick. Again, it's not something I can really wear every day, but I do like it in terms of how long it stays on and in terms of chewing my lips, especially like I've talked about before, it really keeps me from doing that. The regular lipstick does as well. But again, if I like forget to reapply, sometimes I will start chewing again. No question, I would go with the Wet n Wild uh, cat suit. What is it? Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit in Rebel Rose. Not only do I love this formula, it's $4.99 by the way. Not only do I love this formula, it's really good liquid lipstick in terms of staying power, but I also really love this color, this Rebel Rose color. It is just so nice. It's like a kind of pinky, nudie, mauve almost kind of color. I don't know. I just really, really love it on me. ColourPop again also has some liquid lipstick option. Actually, they have their Ultra Matte, which I have this Ultra Matte in, this is Monday, really like the shade. These are 550. This is again, their Ultra Matte. They have like a satin one, which to me, like how is that a liquid lipstick? I mean, I get that it's liquid, but isn't the point of a liquid lipstick that it's supposed to be matte? I don't know, it's kind of weird. I haven't tried any of those. I've only tried the ultra matte. Um, this formula is really great, super pigmented, goes on great, dries really quickly, dries a lot more quickly than this. That's the one thing I'll say about it is that it does take a few minutes to dry down completely. This takes much less time. Um, and also it stays on really well. Like even the kind of inside part of the lip, like even after eating and drinking, sometimes this like totally stays on. There's barely any gone, which is amazing. Whereas with this, it will be gone like after I 
drink coffee or eat or whatever, and I have to kind of reapply just on the little bit of the inside of the lip there so it doesn't look insane. Also, I find that this is more drying than this. The Wet n Wild, it just doesn't, it dries down completely. It doesn't transfer, but it doesn't dry out my lips as much. Next up for gloss, because I do like some gloss, this is another ColourPop. This is their, no, I'm holding the, no, wrong. Okay, so this is the ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip. This is in Fairy Floss. I love this. It is so comfortable. I've never found a gloss that is not super sticky. Granted, I don't think I've ever tried a super expensive gloss. The like drugstore ones that I've tried, they're just really sticky and awful feeling. This is really smooth and nice and uh, I love it. Next is a balm product with a little bit of color. I really like something like that and this stuff is awesome. Again, this is wet and wild. I guess most of this stuff is wet and wild. It's their pout and tease. Sure, whatever. Gel lip balm. It's only $2.99. Oh, this actually says vegan on the bottom, so that's cool. I have this in teas. Oh my god. It's got seven different colors. Well, one of them is just a clear, and the rest are just variations of pinks, kind of. I think there's a kind of orangey color in there, but they're all vegan, and it's just really comfortable. It's got a little bit of a smell, just a little bit of a sweet smell. It honestly doesn't bother me. It's not like the e.l.f. one that just, for some reason, is really disgusting to me and it's really, really comfortable on. It lasts a fair amount of time given what it is, right? Given that it's a kind of gel balm product and it's got a good amount of color as well. And I really, really like the color of this one. Final lip thing, this is the e.l.f. Lip Exfoliator. This is $3. I have it in Sweet Cherry. They've got a bunch of other flavors. This is nice. I would like to try the mint one, but I use this pretty much every single day to exfoliate my lips. They need it so bad and it makes such a difference in not only how they feel, but how like lipstick applies to them. <laughs> so now brushes and tools. So I'll start with the, the sponge, the blender, whatever you call it, beauty blender, whatever, uh, for applying foundation. And I also use it a little bit with the concealer. Um, and again, with the blush as well, I use the Real Techniques Miracle Sponge. You can get it at Walgreens or whatever grocery store. It's like six bucks. It's a little bit cheaper if you get two at one time. Next, I have this e.l.f. complexion brush that's pretty well used and probably needs to be cleaned. Um, this is just what I use for applying the setting powder to my face. No, actually this one is $4. <laughs> this is the more expensive one. So instead, again, if I were going to start over, I would get the cheaper one, which is just the e.l.f. Total Face Brush. I haven't used that one. It's $2, but I'm sure it's fine. Again, I'm not doing any detail work with this. I'm literally just applying a little bit of powder. I don't need a $4 brush to do that. Next for brushes, and this is it for brushes. I don't, I don't, again, I'm using mostly like wet and cream products. So I don't really use a lot of brushes except for this. This. And then these eye brushes. And these I actually just got. This is from that Miss A studio, whatever it's called that I mentioned, where they have a lot of $1 stuff and their brushes are vegan. Well, they just came out with this all about eyes brush set and this holder as well. That's vegan leather. Smells like ass. But this was only $10.55. The 55 cents actually went to an animal charity, a little like shelter. But it's really cute. This little pink and it says AOA studio. I guess that's their the makeup part of the site is AOA. Again, I've used these brushes now a few different times. I really like them. They're super soft. They feel awesome and they're so cheap. Again, they're like a dollar a brush. There's 10 of these and this is all I need in terms of eye brushes. Um, this one I actually use for applying the setting powder just under my eyes. The rest of these I use on, whoops, on my eyes. So again, I haven't had these for long. I've only used them a handful of times, but I just wanted to try them before I do this video, just to have another company to mention that has a bunch of options when it comes to synthetic brushes that are actually reasonably priced. I don't know. I can't imagine spending like $20 for one brush. That's insane to me. But if you didn't want to go this route, if you wanted to just get the e.l.f. stuff, they have basically all of these products uh, for like a dollar $2 each. And then finally for tools, of course, an eyelash curler, e.l.f. has one for $2 and a pencil, pencil sharpener, e.l.f. has one for $1. The final thing would be makeup remover. Now, if you want to go the wipe route, definitely the wet and wild wipes are the best to me. I love the way they smell. I love the way they feel. They don't irritate my eyes like so many of the wipes do, including the e.l.f. ones. Wipes are just so wasteful, especially if you're ma wearing makeup like every day, that's a wipe or two or maybe 
maybe even three. I mean, I don't know how much makeup you're wearing, but that's a lot of wipes that are thrown away every single day. There's the micellar water option, but that stuff tends to be pretty expensive. And again, you're usually using it with the, the cotton pads too, which you're throwing away. It's also pretty wasteful. Wet n Wild does have a micellar option, but it's actually really expensive. So I think it's like $5. But if you look at the bottle, there's, it's tiny. It's a tiny, tiny bottle and you go through it so quickly. It works really well. I've tried it, but again, you go through it so quickly. It's, it's not worth it in my opinion. And it doesn't work that much better than just coconut oil, just taking coconut oil and rubbing it all over my face, including just the mascara and then washing with a cleanser, obviously. And that works almost just as well. And there's like no waste. I don't have to use any pads. I don't have to use any wipes. I feel a lot better about that. So that is it. The total came to, I think like 107.95, something like that. Again, I could have got it down if I had chosen like one of the e.l.f. palettes or something like that, but I really do like this, this BH Cosmetics one. And it gave me a chance to mention another brand that has a lot of vegan products and that says upfront if something is vegan. I will say if you wanna get stuff cheaper, you absolutely can always look for deals. Ulta has some deals. Um, obviously they have more expensive stuff too, but they do sell Wet n Wild. I think they sell some of the Wet n Wild stuff. They even have BH Cosmetics on there, as I mentioned before. I don't think they have ColourPop. They do have e.l.f. though, and sometimes they have deals on various stuff, so that's great. Um, also, the websites themselves, so just the Wet n Wild site, I joined their mailing list just like a month and a half ago, and within that time, they've had two different sales. They had just a random like 24% off sale for like a day, and then they had a Valentine's Day sale for 25% off everything, your entire order, free shipping on like $30 or more or something like that. Also, a lot of these sites have like a 10 to 20% off when you sign up. And for stuff like Wet n Wild that you can find in stores, there are often sales like a buy one, get one free type of thing, or even I've seen like 50% off some of the Wet n Wild stuff in store. And that's it. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all in terms of makeup stuff that I'm probably like ever gonna do. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe. That's cool. Comments and questions, of course. Let me know if you know any more cruelty-free brands that are upfront about which products are vegan, um, like inexpensive stuff, preferably. And also, again, if you have any recommendations for like maybe setting powder or uh, eyeliner, that would be super awesome. Or really anything, again, super helpful, super awesome. Uh, you can support the channel at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And I will have a new video very soon. Too Faced is so weird to me in terms of their marketing. I mean, obviously their stuff's higher end. They're obviously marketing to women, but then a lot of their stuff is kind of cutesy, like the peach line and the chocolate stuff. It's like, I don't know, that, that seems like something I would really love if I were like 12. But then they have a mascara called Better Than Sex. Like who, what, why? I don't know. It's creepy.